G'day, welcome to another episode of Built by Dan and yet another installment in my GT40 kit build series. In today's episode, I'm going to be removing the engine from the engine bay so that I can look at installing the coolant reservoirs this episode and be prepared for next episode where I'll look to install the fuel system, so fuel pumps, fuel filters, fuel lines and the like. Alright, so I've removed the engine already. I didn't film the process because I thought it was probably going to take me forever to get it out, but in the end it lifted straight out and I'm spewing that I didn't record it just to prove it. Uh, anyway, engine's out. I have actually already started to mark up where I want the top bolts for my support brackets to sit. So I've got these support brackets, they are on um, spacers, they're different size just because of the angle of this section that we're fixing to, so that'll just keep the bottle upright and vertical. So I've marked that out, I've got all my different components out ready to go. Uh, so I've got a couple of lengths of silicon hose there for overflow, and overflow from the header tank over to the, re the recovery tank and as well as the discharge from the recovery tank if it starts to overflow there, hopefully it doesn't get to that. I've got some silicon hoses. I've got more of these um, sort of corrugated or, or ribbed stainless hoses for the coolant system. So they'll connect from the rear hard tubes. It, well, one connects to the engine and then the other one will connect up to the, the main header tank. I've got some hose clamps there, uh, so they're quite large. That's what will actually hold the header tank and recovery tank to the brackets and some radiator caps. So I do need to modify one of them for the, uh, the recovery or overflow tank. Other than that, I also have a four-way brake adapter. So when the kit was delivered, it was delivered with a three-way adapter, which didn't give me the ability to connect my brake uh, pressure switch. So as you can see there, I've got my brake pressure switch just mounted onto that four-way adapter, and I'll be able to get that fitted off properly. So keen to get that done while I'm sitting in the engine bay. And we'll see how it all goes. There's gonna be a lot of drilling and tapping to um, use some rubber line P-clips just to mount the overflow um, hose up underneath this little shelf, I suppose I'll call it, this rear support on the, at the back firewall. And I think once I get that done, I'll be pretty close to being able to apply the heat shielding to the rear firewall as well. So that'll be exciting because that'll sort of be the end of all the drilling and tapping into the, into the um, aluminium chassis. So I'm at, at, I'll be at that point where I'm comfortable to be able to, to wrap that up. Anyway, I'm going to have to clear all this out now and get started on drilling these holes and mounting these overflow tanks. I have just left, even though it's not bolted in, just this rear support tube just so that I could get a bit of an idea as to how these tanks are going to sit. I'm just trying to juggle this one hand at the moment. But basically they will sit about there. I wanted to make sure that I had enough clearance for the cap and enough clearance at the bottom here for that ribbed um, stainless hose to be able to fit off. So with that all confirmed, I'll get myself sorted, grab a few tools and get stuck into fitting these components off. Now before I get stuck into today's episode, I'm excited to announce that I have partnered with Sterling Kit to review one of their products that I think is very fitting for this channel. It is this Toyin engine. It is a 110 scale V8 engine. It's fully operational, it comes as a kit, needs to be assembled, and I'll be doing a mini build series on this. Uh, it'll be released in the coming weeks. It'll be a three-part series, it'll be an unboxing, an assembly, and then actually running the engine. So the engine runs on nitro fuel, it revs to about 12,500 RPM, 
And uh, yeah, look, it's pretty cool. I've obviously already assembled the engine. It wasn't overly difficult and um, keen to see how it all goes in, in getting it sort of fired up and running. So th if this is something that you think you'd be interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description below. And if you're going to go buy something from them, be sure to use my discount code for an extra 10% off. They have a range of engines, not only this V8, they also have four cylinders, rotary engines, motorcycle engines, airplane engines. So I'm sure they'll have something that'll be of interest to you. All right, time to get some work done. Now I was just getting ready and setting up and something dawned on me and I'm glad it did. I don't know where it came from, but this header tank has obviously the uh, inlet on the side here, which was became a problem with the bracket because it sits right where this stainless steel clamp goes to hold the bottle to the bracket. So what I've had to do is extend the length of those slots so that I can get that hose clamp low enough to wrap around just underneath that fitting. That's also changed the height that I want to mount the bottle at. So you can see here I've got an extra couple of marks. I tried one inch and two inches lower than what I had originally marked and I'm going to run with one inch below where I previously was. So let's get stuck into drilling these holes and getting these bottles mounted. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I do have some offset spaces here at the back because this wall is angled and we want to keep the bottle vertical. So what I want to do is get the top two points fitted off and then when that piece is sitting in its place, obviously with these taken out, I'll get a more, be able to get a more accurate measure or location as to where those holes actually are. All right, so I've just temporarily put those screws in so that I can mark out that location. So this does obviously sit out a bit further. I just wanna go and try and guess that, I suppose the position of those screw holes and then have them off. Um, it's just easier to get these first two in and then measure out from there. So I did just mark it with the bracket up against the body panel and then just check to make sure that with the spacer there and the screw in that it's all sort of going to align. There seems to be enough sort of play in it that it'll, um, it'll be able to find a, a sweet spot to sit. So I'll go ahead, drill those bottom two holes and before I fit off the bracket, I will need to install those stainless hose clamps because I won't be able to feed them through the back there once it's all bolted up. So just need to feed these through the slots. Did try with the other one earlier and it took a little bit to sort of feed it through without sort of putting a, a bend or a crimp in the, the hose clamp or like the band. So we're gonna try and get that sit roughly in the center of each of the slots. And what I'm going to try and achieve is to have the, um, the screw fitting to tighten it sitting on the inside so that from the outside, if you're viewing it, you don't see the fastener. All right, try and get this fitted off. I'm just going to do, actually, maybe I'll do the easy side first. So I do have an access hole in the side of this piece, you can see on this side, hopefully the camera's viewing over here. Um, so I can get my hand in there, but there is another piece that sort of only gives me probably not even an inch to, this top, to the back of this top bolt. So I'm going to start on this side where I've got a little bit more room to play.
just so it's supported. hard to even just get my hand in there to put that washer on because I can't bend my fingers to sort of get it in position. Now hopefully these all line up. Alright, I just need to tighten them off and I should be right to fit off this bottle. So I did notice the bracket just sort of curve in, flex a little bit, just tightening them up fully. That's really annoying me. So that's all fixed off nice and tight now. So I'll go ahead and grab the bottle. Now what I wanted to do is just have the bottom of the bottle flush with the bottom of the bracket. And then I'll do the same on the other side and that'll keep the bottles mounted the same and that's why, oh sorry, at the same height um, and that's why I had to sort of elongate those holes at the back on the other bottle because where this band sits based on just being centered on the existing holes it would be right where that large inlet is or outlet. Top one tight enough just to hold the bottle in place. Looks really good, happy with that. Now I can move on to the other side. So that's my two coolant 
tanks or bottles fitted off. Happy with where they're sitting. What I'm going to do before I start looking at fitting off the, um, the sort of overflow hose or tube and the other flexible stainless steel uh, radiator tubes, I'm just going to jump in the middle there while I've got the drill out and plenty of space. And I'm going to fit off my four way union to the brake lines and drill and tap that hole so I can get that mounted off. I probably won't leave the uh, pressure switch fitted uh, once I've done that because I don't want the main pulley on the engine to hit that as I'm installing it. Okay, so I'm just going to fit the uh, four-way union onto these top two brake, rear brake lines. Now I'm not worrying about fitting off the bottom one only because the top two are what controls the height and this will just connect up underneath as needed. But before I do that, I don't want anything going in there. Cheating a little bit, but it's going to be not very clean in there. But I have to pull all of that out at some stage anyway, I think. So um, I can just lift it up and vacuum under there a little bit. Now, I did go and buy myself a ratcheting uh, tap wrench. So, keen to give this a shot. be difficult. It's just as a result of the angle that it wants to screw in on. Alright, now my brake pressure switch can be fitted off. Perfect. Looks so much better now that I could actually fit it all off. I just didn't want to fit it off with the three-way because the mounting points in a different spot for the four-way unions. So that's that. I'm gonna hop out of here and start looking at how I'm going to route and do the connections for the, the radiator hose and the overflow hose, which will run along the top here. So there it all is from a better angle. Now onto the hosing. All right, so it's time to look at routing the overflow tube or hose from the header tank to the recovery or overflow tank. So I've started mocking that up. Let's have a look at what I've done. All right, so I've got the tube coming out of the header tank. I'm going to have the, uh, the hose come up and just run underneath this mount. Just it makes this uh, curve a little bit more of a, a sweeping curve and not so much of a, of a bend, I suppose. I did consider trying to tuck it back down there and try and keep it level, but I am just concerned that this is where the radiator cap sits on the bottle. 
and that's where it has to go on from. So you're really starting to limit your ability to hold on to that cap and, and tighten that on. It does take a fair bit of pressure to actually get that to fit. So by having it up higher, it keeps it nice and clear and it needs to run up anyway. So it, the fact that it's sort of heading uphill is not too much of an issue. This cap should seal and pressurize. So if it's going to overflow, it'll force the liquid up and over. I then just come along and taped the hose underneath that top tube of the chassis, back down, and then it loops around and connects to a little nipple on the bottom of the overflow bottle there. So I just want to keep it nice and clean. Uh, the clamps, I was just going to mount this uh, hose in the middle, and I've just sort of tried to evenly space the clamps. I think I'm missing one, there should be another one over here. Um, just so that I can see how it all goes. I want to have all the screws to the back so that it's got a nice clean look and keeps the hose sort of along that sort of front edge and nice and flush. Again, I know it's uh, probably very anal uh, and I'm sort of considering all these details, but I really want it to look good when it's finished and to make it look like it's all been thawed out and not just slapped together. So I think I'm pretty set on that routing. The only thing that I'm thinking is that there's still meant to be one more connection from the thermostat at the top rear of the engine sitting back here that will need to run across and there should be another nipple in the top of that header tank for it to discharge any of that um, air or liquid that um, is released from that thermostat, noting that it is probably the highest point in the system, so that it will likely be the bleed point. Um, the only problem is the bottle that I've been provided, or the, the header tank that I've been provided, obviously doesn't have another nipple to connect another section of this hose onto. So I'm just waiting for the manufacturer to get back to me. Um, funnily enough, the, the packet that it came in had was marked for a GM and they then stuck a Coyote label over the top. Um, so I'm only assuming that oh, maybe the GM's thermostat doesn't have that relief point um, and they've tried to repurpose a tank that's not suitable. I'm gonna continue anyway, uh, knowing that I'm probably a little way off needing to actually run that engine and have the ability to, to route that hose. But if I come across to the engine, so this is the point here on my thermostat that I'm looking to connect to the header tank. And when I started considering that, I started reconsidering my placement of this main overflow tube. What I might do is push that all the way to the back so that I can then get two clips in the one basic, basically the one screw hole and just mount them sort of back to back like that, one running along the back and then the one that goes from the thermostat to the header tank will run along the front. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I think I might have actually run out of the rubber line P-clips but that doesn't matter, I can go and buy some more. I'd rather make sure that the uh, hose is adequately supported and buy a few extras rather than skimping and then have it sort of rattling around or not properly supported. So a lot of drilling and tapping ahead to mount all of these clamps and then I can move on to the main tubes uh, from the, the center hard tubes to the header tank and the other one will be to the engine. I will just quickly uh, look to seal off these bottles. So the overflow tank, uh, I'm not too concerned about the, the overflow nipple on the side of it, but I do want to get the radiator cap fitted. Uh, because this is an overflow tank and not a radiator, I actually need to modify the radiator cap that came with the kit to remove the lower seal. The header tank here, I'm just going to put a 90 degree um, elbow on that pointing down just so that nothing sort of falls in there. And I can then modify that later to suit the final arrangement.
So before I go and fit this modified cap off, I'll just quickly show you. This is the standard cap. This is the modified cap for the overflow tank. So basically I've pulled off this rubber seal and I've cut down that metal flange under there so that this piece will now fit into the top of the bottle there, or the, uh, the tank, so to speak. All right, so there it is with the recovery or overflow tank radiator cap on. And that's the header tank. So I have just fitted off that 90 degree elbow there, just to stop anything from falling in. And I'm now gonna go along and just mark, drill, and tap each of those holes for the screws for those rubber-lined P-clips. I've just gone through and marked out all of my holes that I need to drill and tap, and I've then gone and center-punched them. Let's see if I can get in underneath here really awkward even just to mark out those holes underneath so I'm not looking forward to having to drill and tap them but needs to be done so let's get stuck into it. Okay, so with all those holes drilled and tapped, I will now make a start fitting off all these clips. I'm gonna start from this end at my header tank and just work my way back, feeding just enough of the uh, hose through to just keep a nice sort of flowing fitment. Mount these the opposite way to uh, the way I had originally ten intended. So this is where adjusting the amount of slack I have here will control where this hose will sit. Just give them a little bit more. So I've just sheared the, uh, the head off that screw. I'm gonna have to find a way to drill that out and um, find a replacement. Probably did put a little bit too much force onto that, trying to get it to do up. I'm not sure why it's having such an issue. There is sort of two thicknesses of aluminium there that it's passing through, so. Maybe it got jammed and I've just given it too much force. I'm gonna skip that one, keep going with the others and I can come back to it and see if I can uh, sort that out.
Definitely gave that other one way too much force. Might even just leave it and then just drill a new hole and offset it slightly. So that is everything fitted off now, except for that one where I snap the screw. Doing pretty well, that's my first one. Now I just need to work out how much of this I want to hang down. I do just want to, I might actually just wait because I do have my fuel outlet so supply to the pump and then return so I might wait till I've got my fuel line sorted so I can make sure that that sort of sits around and sort of clears them nicely I think it'll be okay but just to be sure I think I'll wait there is still probably about a meter of excess there So now the only other bit that I need to do for the overflow line is the actual, I suppose the, this is a recovery line, let's call it, to the recovery tank. So the coolant can come through from the header tank and then it can be drawn back out of this tank into the header tank. But this nipple here is for the overflow, so they'll discharge to the ground. Now, because just because of the way it all sort of sits i've purposely got that nipple pointing to the outside because i've got a, the nipple pointing to the outside on the other tank but i'm thinking about actually just drilling a hole in this wall and concealing that drain pipe or drain tube inside this cavity here so it can run in run down i could probably work out a way or somewhere where i could put a little clamp just to hold the hose and then drill a hole on the inside of this piece so it just drips through to the bottom get a couple of grommets one for the floor here and then one for this wall and I think that would be a really nice finish keep it nice and neat so yeah really happy with that now I'm going to move on to just sorting out my fitting so I don't know whether I'm going to put a straight fitting or a 90 degree fitting on the bottom of the header tank this 90 degree fitting will get probably spun around so it points back towards the firewall and then there'll need to be probably a custom tube that will link back up to the uh, connection on the front of the engine there I've got two 90 degree elbows to go onto here, so I'll get them fitted up as well. Obviously one of them fits up to the header tank. The other one will connect to the engine. All right, I've been having a little bit of a play around here with my fittings and coolant tubes. And I think I'm pretty settled on this 90 degree wrapping around, at least for now. This will connect up to the engine sort of somewhere in the center here. Um, so I don't want to probably modify that too much until I know what that arrangement's going to look like because I may end up sort of cutting this back so that it sort of tucks in a bit closer to that return on the chassis. And then I might even just trim this off so it comes more at a 45 rather than a 90. Down the bottom here I had the option or I was considering the option of whether I go with a straight fitting or a 90. I think I'm pretty set on the 90. It sort of just shoots that coolant hose out nicely to connect up down here. I do just need to double check which way these two go but um, either way it'll either connect up to the top one and that'll just spin around or it'll connect up to the bottom one. Now. As I was having a look at it, I'm probably not going to run this tube 
this episode only because as you can see there I have a balancing tube that runs between the two tanks in each sill and that's the valve there so that I can actually isolate one tank from the other. So the main tank is the passenger tank with the driver's tank being I suppose a sub tank you might want to call it. You can isolate the driver's side tank. Again, if you're racing or something and you want to do, you know, getting right down to the nitty gritty of your weight balancing, that would allow you to limit the amount of weight on the driver's side by offsetting the driver's weight with the weight of the fuel tank on the passenger side. So this is the valve that, op that basically isolates the driver's side fuel tank. I do want to just get my lines run through and have a good idea of where that sits so that I can then potentially route these around or up and over as I need to so that they're not sort of rubbing on each other or clashing in any way. So I was hoping to get these tubes fitted off, but as I said, I'll leave that to next episode. Next episode, I will be completing the fuel system. So we're we'll looking to connect up from our fuel feed at the bottom there. It will run around to a first stage filter, come across to this side and we'll have the fuel pump and a second stage fuel filter. Well, like, so let's call it the main, the fine filter. And then that'll run up to regulator and connect to the fuel rail on the engine. All right, before I wrap up today's episode, I'm just going to fit off these hose clamps. Now for these two center tubes, I did just double check with the build manual and I did have them the wrong way around. The top tube goes to the header tank, the bottom tube connects to the engine. We'll get these ones fitted off. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it because it really looks like we're making some progress in the engine bay. Next episode, as I said, we'll be getting stuck into the fuel system and then I'll probably be in a position to al almost sort of refit the engine and um, everything's sort of there to connect it up. Thanks for watching.